Thank you so much. Um, so the, my name is Ravi Chitiala. Um, I have a PhD in image processing, computer vision, um, but then at some point in time I found Python and I just love Python. Okay. Um, because of that I ended up teaching Python at UCSC, which is technically at the extension program, not at the main campus. Um, I've been teaching for the last four years. Um, one of the things I teach in the class is the internals of data structures. Um, because if you, you need to know the internals of data structure in order to appreciate what methods you're supposed to use and what you're not supposed to use. Okay? Just because Python provides you functionality just doesn't mean that you should actually use them. Okay? So I'm going to highlight those uh, things that you should and things that you should not. Okay? So I'm a co-author of a book on image processing using Python. I love it so much, so I wrote a book also on that. Um, I teach two classes at the UCSC Extension. One is Advanced Python. Uh, its title is called Python for Programmers. And the other one is Deep Learning and Artificial Intelligence with uh, TensorFlow. Um, all right, so the content of this talk is pretty straightforward. We'll start by discussing about list. I'll give some examples, just so that to get everybody on, on, on board. And then I'll talk about the internal constructions of it. And I'm going to focus only on CPython, okay? Uh, CPython is the most popular version of Python. Uh, there are other implementations like Jython and Python. Um, I don't use them, so I'm not familiar with how they actually work. Um, then finally, I'll end with uh, some questions about performance. Okay, which method is more performant than which method, and things like that. Okay, uh, I'll do the same thing for tuple as well. Um, everybody calls it tuple. I call it tuple, but bear with me when I keep saying tuple. Okay, I just know I that's a, that's a term I've been using when, since I started programming in Python. Okay, the first one is list. Uh, some characteristics of the list are uh, lists are mutable. That means you can add elements, you can remove elements. Um, you can expand them by adding more elements using append or extend. You can add more and more and make it longer and longer. Uh, you can also sort them in the sense you can make it go ascending or descending order and things like that. Okay. All right. Uh, just to put everything on stage, um, so imagine I have a list called L1, which has numbers 3, 4, and 5. Uh, then I can do an append operation, for example. So the append operation will take that one element, 6, and add it to the end of the list, so it becomes 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, if I do extend, uh, extend a list 7, 8, 9, then it takes 3, 4, 5, 6, which is from the previous operation, adds individually 7, 8, 9 to it. Okay. Uh, pop removes the last element from the list. So pop with no, no input in it will remove the last element as shown in this example. Okay. Um, now if I pop an element at a specific index, if I want to pop an element at a specific index, I can say um, L1 dot pop of 4. That means it will remove the element in index number 4. Okay. Um, so, and you end up removing number seven. Okay. Uh, similarly, you can also insert an element to a specific position. You can say L1 dot insert four comma seven. That means to the index four, add the element seven. Okay. And you can also do indexing. Uh, you can say L1 of two. You'll get the second element uh, or the third element, the second index. Or you can say L1 two colon five. That means you're getting elements from index two all the way to five minus one, which is two, three, and four. All those three index indices. You get them as a list, and this operation is called slicing. Okay. So these are the most basic operations that you do on a list. Now the question is, how does actually list internally operate? And which one of these methods are actually efficient, and which one is not efficient? Okay. Now, when imagine you start with a list called my list equal to A, B, C, D. Uh, you have, uh, I, so uh, internally Python lists are nothing but arrays. Uh, they're not linked lists, they're arrays. And those arrays can be expanded as and when needed. Okay. So um, let's say you start by populating a list, my list equal to ABCD. It creates an array of four elements. And it puts the ABCD into some location in memory. Okay. And then it puts the pointer to those ABCDs into the array. So this array is nothing but an array of pointers, as far as the CPython is concerned. Okay. Now, this is, when I start, I have four elements, and this is where I end. Okay. But what if I try to add a fifth element? Now what happens when I add the fifth element? When I add a fifth element, there is no space to put the fifth element here because there's only four space, four elements array that's possible, okay? So now it, Python has to expand this array. When it expands this array, there's a certain operation, uh, there's a certain logic for expanding, which I'll come to in a second. But when I add the fifth element, it has to expand. And let's say it expands to eight array. Um, now, when it expands to the eighth array, now it, uh, it, it stores E, it stores E and puts the corresponding pointer in position number, index number four, okay? 
Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal. But imagine you keep doing this operation. Every time it goes to pretty much the end of the list, uh, the end of the current version of this array of uh, pointers, it has to keep expanding. And that operation is not cheap. But there is a logic that they use in order to expand that keeps it a little bit not inefficient. It's still very optimal. Okay. And the way it actually expands is, um, that's the corresponding C code. You can find that code here in, uh, on GitHub. Uh, GitHub.com has the uh, Python uh, C code, uh, which you can download, you can, uh, you can compile, and stuff like that. Okay. So the way it expands is, you take an existing size. Let's say the existing size is 1,000. <clears throat> Uh, then you add some more number to it. And what that number is, uh, you right shift by three. That means you're essentially dividing by eight. So if your original size is 1,000, you're dividing by eight. You get 1,000 by eight, that'll be what, 125 or something like that. So you add 125 to it, okay? Plus you also add one more small number, which is if the size is less than nine, uh, you add three or you add a six. So in our case, the size is, new size is 1,000. So that means you're going to add a six, okay? So which means if your current array size is 1,000, for example, then the new array size would be, due to this, it will be 125. And due to this, there will be another 6. So new array size would be a plus 131. Okay? And with the round off and everything, the number might look a little bit different, but it's approximately around 131. Okay? So that's how a Python determines what the new size is supposed to be. Um, so which basically means that if you have a really large array size, for example, uh, sorry, uh, list size, uh, like 1,000 or 10,000 or such big numbers, uh, this factor is going to be much, much smaller, okay? The third term, new size, less than nine, co question mark, three, colon, six. That term is going to be much smaller. So which means predominantly this guy, the new size right shifted by three, that's the one that's going to determine uh, the change of the shape of your list. And that number approximately comes to around 12%. Because you divide by 8, so which means 100 divided by 8 is approximately 12. So you have a 12% increase in uh, list size as, you, as the size gets bigger and bigger. For a smaller one, the number is not 12%, it's much more than that. Okay? Uh, if you start, sit down and do the calculation, you will find that the growth pattern is it starts with nothing. And then 4, 8, 16, 25, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Now, Every time you expand, there is one additional cost that you have to do. Okay. So you store an array of pointer in some memory location, and now you're expanding it to eight. Okay. Let's say you have a four and you have to expand it to eight. It's very likely you don't have immediately next to that existing four array pointer, you may not have enough space. So that means it has to go to another location, create this eight element array, and copy all these four into that location. Okay. And that operation is expensive. Okay. So one approach you can do, in case if you really, really have to have a very optimal code, is to pre-allocate your uh, list to a certain size. That way you have already a, pre, um, uh, a list that's pretty much fixed in size. Then you can go ahead and start putting stuff in place. Okay? That's one approach you can take. Uh, but uh, Python does do a wonderful job of uh, amortizing the cost. Uh, it amortizes the cost over multiple events. So if you just look at that one operation of creating a new array and then copying stuff, yeah, it looks expensive. But the way they expand the size, um, your, your, the uh, thing is not that expensive. Okay? At least you wouldn't feel the pinch, or most of us wouldn't feel the pinch, unless you reach a point where you are going for a very, very high speed of doing your list operations, okay? or list creation operation. Yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how um, list uh, sizes get expanded. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the methods that are actually inefficient. Now, based on what you know, which is uh, this guy is nothing but an array of pointers, and you store objects in memory. Um, now, certain operations will automatically turn out to be very in, uh, inefficient. For example, if I say pop of two, my list dot pop of two, that means I'm saying from index two, from index two, remove that element. Okay? So that means I'm removing C from my list. Okay? When I remove C, I got a problem, which is I have zero and one correctly filled, and then there is three and four filled, but now two is going to be removed. So that means I have to move three and four down to two and three index, okay? So that means now I'm moving the pointers around within the same array, okay? Now, the worst case scenario would be if I try to pop the zeroth element, okay? If I pop the zeroth element, that means I'm moving everybody down one level, okay? And that becomes an order of n operation, okay? So that's why Pop with no index is OK, because you're popping only the last element. Nobody has to move. You just remove the fourth one, and you're done. Uh, but if you were to pop an element at a specific index, 
you are moving stuff around. And the worst case scenario would be order of n operation. Okay? And if your n is really, really big, then it's going to be expensive. Okay. Um, so I moved, I removed the uh, C. Now I had to move the D pointer to position index number two and the E pointer to index number three. So I had to move both of them down. So as you can imagine, if it's pop of zero, then that means I'm moving one to zero, two to one, yada, 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 and it keeps going. Similarly, uh, mylist dot insert two comma f is also inefficient uh, because if I have to insert uh, f at this position at index number two, uh, that means I have to move the three and the four up. What was two will now become three, and what was three will become four, and I have to start moving stuff up in order to just put one element in position. Okay. So that's about it. Sir. So which basically means that the uh, best operations or the most efficient operation as far as lists are concerned uh, is append, for example. Okay, you're putting an element at the last index, okay? And as long as the list, you're not expanding the list, you're within the same list, you can keep adding stuff and you'll be okay. But even expanding the list is amortized across over time, so you're going to be okay. Um, extend operation is order of k, k being the number of element in the list that you're expand, extending from, okay? Which kind of makes sense. Because you have k elements in your original, uh, in your uh, smaller list, if you're going to put it into the master list, yeah, obviously you have to go through uh, k operations in order to put the stuff in. Okay? So it's not inefficient, it just turns out it'd be order of k. Okay? Uh, popping the last element is order of one, because you just have to remove only the last element, you're not doing anything to the list. Pop anywhere else uh, is order of n on a worst case scenario. Okay? Best case could be smaller than that, but worst case is uh, order of n. Similarly, insert is also order of uh, n, worst case. Uh, indexing is order of one, because all that you're saying is, I want to go get the element in the second index. All that it has to do is go to the second index, get the pointer, find out who is pointing to, and return that element back. Okay? So that's an order of one operation. Uh, slicing is order of k, which again is kind of makes sense, uh, because you're asking for asking you to get k elements, so it's going to take order of k operation. Uh, in operators are efficient in list, inefficient in list, uh, because when you do an in operator, you have to go to every element in the list, check whether that element is the element that you're looking for. If not, go to the next element and keep repeating it. So the best case scenario is that is the first element. The worst case scenario is that element doesn't even exist in the list. That means you're going through an order of n operation. Okay. Um, sorting uh, uh, in Python list, sorting is implemented using something called tim sort, and that's an order of n log n operation. Okay. So that's about list. So if you are going to use some operation, Ideally, you should stick to append and extend to make changes to the list, okay? Uh, don't use pop. Pop is okay, but pop with index is going to be inefficient, okay? And in operators are also inefficient uh, in list. If you really need an in operator, go for a set. Sets are order of one. Uh, list in operator is order of n. Okay? The next one is uh, tuple, tuple, whatever name you want to call it. Uh, the characters of tuple is it's immutable, okay? Um, and so let's look at some example, and then I'll explain a few things. An example of a tuple here is t1 equal to 3, 4, 5. And I can do some operations like indexing, t1 colon 2, uh, t1 uh, index 2. Uh, that gives me number 5. And uh, t1 0 to 2 means it gives you a slice in the form of a tuple, and 0 and 1 index, so 3 and 4. Okay? Uh, but tuples are immutable. That means you can't add stuff to it. You can't remove stuff from it. Okay? So which means I can't do operations like t1 of uh, t1 2 equal to 6. That's illegal because you cannot change the element in a tuple. Okay. Look. So now um, in the case of a tuple, essentially this is fixed at creation time. Okay. When I create this tuple t1 equal to 3, 4, 5, the size of the tuple is fixed. So that means Python can go ahead, create an array uh, of pointers. So like this one has uh, four elements, a, b, c, d. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3 create an array of pointers, uh, and the in array will contain the pointers to those objects. Okay? Now, this size is fixed. So that means later you can't go and change an um, item that, let's say, index number one is pointing to. Okay? Now, um, so because you cannot add and because you cannot remove stuff, there are many, many operations are Im immediately eliminated. Operations like append, extends don't exist in tuple because they are fixed at creation time. Um, there is no pop, there is no remove, there is no insert because you can't 
remove stuff, you can't insert stuff into random position. So there's only a few operations that you can do. So you can do operations like uh, indexing. Indexing is order of one, because you're looking for one element. You say here is an index, you go get the element and you return it back. Okay. Uh, slicing is order of k, uh, because you're saying get me all the elements within this set of index, indices, so it's going to get k indices, and it's going to return k elements in the form of a tuple. Uh, in operator is still order of n, because it still has to go through every element, check whether the element that you're looking for is exactly the same element that's in the tuple. So the uh, best case scenario is order of one, you can find it and you can walk away in the first time. Worst case is it's not there and you've got to go through order of n. Okay. Um, so uh, I'll talk about where you use one versus the other, but uh, just some interesting characteristics of tuple. Um, to, if, let's say, you create these tuples, you delete them, it happens too often, then it causes memory uh, defragmentation. So uh, Python has an optimization for, um, sorry, memory fragmentation. Um, so Python has this interesting idea of reusing tuples, actually. So what they have is, if you, let's say you create a tuple of a certain size, um, and then you create, you destroy the tuple, or you create another tuple, uh, once, a, once a previous one is destroyed, you create another tuple of exactly the same size, it might end up reusing the previous memory location for its new tuple, okay? It's essentially there is a pre-allocated region within memory where Python will put all the tuples, okay? And whenever you destroy one of them, somebody else will come and reuse that region, okay? So that's why this example, um, t1 equal to 3467, and then I have id, which gives you the memory id uh, of a particular object, uh, and then I have t1 equal to 6, which means I destroyed my previous tuple by pointing to an integer now, and I create t2, which is a completely new tuple, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2 and 423, and I ask for the id, the id both might be the same, because Python might have reused that exact memory location for uh, storing the new tuple. Um, so, uh, so which means that the um, thing that's obviously popping out is they are not over-allocated, okay? Um, whereas in the case of a list, if let's say you have a list, uh, you have only five elements in your list, you still have to allocate an array of size eight, even though you only have five elements in your list, okay? Whereas with tuples, you allocate precisely the amount that you need to allocate and nothing more, okay? All right, so to conclude, um, use the appropriate data structure for the appropriate purpose. For example, uh, if your collection has to change constantly, then obviously you have to stick to a list. There is no choice for you, okay? Um, but if your uh, collection does, is not going to change, or it's very unlikely to change, uh, then it's better to keep it in the form of a tuple, because you are not wasting memory, you are being much more efficient in the way you handle things, okay? An example would be, uh, this is something Python automatically does, um, if you have to return a collection from a function, okay, um, what would be more efficient, a list or a tuple? A tuple is more efficient because anyway when the function, when the value is coming back from a function, in the middle of that transfer from the caller to the callee, no change is going to happen. So what's the point of sending it through a list which is actually a little more expensive in terms of memory? You could as well make them in the form of a tuple, okay? Um, you could do that by yourself. You can make a tuple and return it. Or even if you don't do it, if let's say in your function you have return a comma b comma c, uh, Python will automatically make them into a tuple and return it back. Okay, so. Um, so as you can see, um, lists are much more complex and uh, that's why there is actually 300 plus line, 3,000 plus lines of code in C for creating a list, uh, whereas there's only 1,000 lines of code for a tuple. Uh, this is only a 30 minute talk, so I, I couldn't talk about sets and dictionaries, but they are another amazing uh, set of data structures. Uh, if you learn dictionary, you pretty much learn sets. Because in Python, a dictionary, uh, a set is nothing but a dictionary with a small twist to it. In fact, the, the source code right at the top, they clearly say that a dictionary is nothing but a set. Okay? But I highly recommend people taking a look at it as well. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Uh, here is my LinkedIn uh, link and my Twitter handle. Thank you. Any questions? And, and some references. I'll post these on Twitter eventually. So we have time for some questions. If uh, Hey, you're saying that in Python, a set is basically a dict, just that doesn't have any items, right? Sorry? 
Can you you're saying that a set in Python is basically like a dict, except it, does, it only has one element, right? Uh, yeah. But if you make a dict in a particular order, dicts now preserve the ordering. Sets do not. Why is that? Um, I don't know. That, so this is a new in Python 3. So until Python 3.6, uh, dictionaries in Python yeah. were not preserving order. Okay, that means that you insert elements in a certain order. Let's say you insert one, two, and three, and four. The keys one, two, three, and four. Uh, but when you actually print it, it might appear as uh, the key might, two might be first, then it might be four, then three, then one. Okay, uh, but in 3.6, they found out a way to um, uh, do this operation of insertion, um, keep maintain the order, and they implemented it. Uh, I haven't gone through the details of it, uh, but the one thing I know, which um, again, maybe I should not say it, uh, or maybe I'll just say it, um, is that uh, the most of the operation in dictionary, the 3.6 version of dictionary, is exactly same as the previous implementation, except for, if I understand it correctly, it's a masking operation that is different between the um, older version and the newer version. The masking operation that tells you what the index is, that's different between the two. Oh, okay, okay thank you, uh, yep. that makes sense. Any? Oh. Hi, I'm just wondering, what's your recommendation if your operations really are those expensive ones and in your application you want to add elements in between, remove them from in between, and there's a million of those. What data structure uh, do you recommend from the standard or non-standard libraries? Okay. Um, in my personal experience, what I've found is that uh, I normally end up inserting stuff to the end, okay? Uh, but in some scenarios, I ended up finding that I needed to insert something in the front as well, okay? If you have that need, where you have to insert in the front and to the end, then there's another data structure called DEQ, D-E-Q-U-E, DEQ, okay? So that will work out perfectly fine, okay? But inserting anywhere in the middle will always be expensive. So which means that you can rethink how you do your coding um, in case of optimization is the key part of your work then you should rethink how you are actually doing the work. Um, that way maybe you can avoid uh, that operation. Okay. And if your list is small, like let's say it's only 10 element, 20 element, yeah, insert, expense is, insert might not be as expensive. Okay. But if you have like a million elements and you're trying to move stuff around, it might not be the most optimal way of doing stuff. Uh, do you have any recommendations for uh, data structures where I don't want to grow the list, but um, I do want to mutate what's inside of it? Meaning, a <coughs> tuple is not a great uh, way because it's immutable. Yep. Um, can I have a data structure that's compact, uh, that doesn't grow? I know the fields, field length of the thing is, but I do want to modify the field. Do you have any recommendations okay. for that? So if uh, one way I can think of that scenario is like the way um, people do in um, STL and C++. Uh, in vectors, you, in vectors in C++, you say I'm, I need a vector of length thousand, and then you keep adding, modifying the elements within it. You might in, initialize everything with zero, and then you keep modifying the value. So that's one approach you can take. Okay. Uh, so which means that you start by saying I'm going to create a list of length thousand or whatever that number, and then you say that I'm going to use the indexing operation, not the indexing op assignment operation, where I will say index number zero, I'm going to assign this value. Index number one, I'm going to assign this value. Okay. So that way you are not expanding the list. Your list is size is fixed. You pre-allocate it, so that means no need for any more expansion. But you have to keep assigning values to it. Yeah. And you mentioned in the conclusion that the return value is recommended to use a tuple. And my question is that, what if we use name tuple? Is there any like performance trade-offs? Um, the way I use name tuple, uh, different people seem to look at things differently. The way I use name tuple. Um, is that I use it as a way to, uh, so name tuple is a, a data structure in the collections module, okay? And that data structure, here in a, in a tuple, uh, you, have, um, you, have, you do everything based on index. You say uh, T1, 0, T1, 1, T1, 2, et cetera, okay? But sometime if you have, let's say, a bunch of things that are unrelated, unrelated in the sense they're not all integers, one is an integer, another is a Boolean, and the third one is a string, and the fourth one is some object. Then T1 of 0, T1 of 1, everything is a different, different data, data type. Okay? And it can be very confusing when you use a regular tuple. Okay? At that point, I actually end up using a name tuple. What name tuple does is you can give a name um, to every one of those indices, let's call it that. Okay? Once you give a name to it, then you don't have to refer to them as 0, 1, 2, 3. You call them as T1 dot 
um, some Boolean equal to true. Uh, T1 dot something else is something else, okay? So I use it as a tuple where I can give names, okay? But some w another way of looking at it is you can also think of it as a class that doesn't need any uh, long definition requirements, okay? Imagine you define a class with uh, variables like name, age, and date of birth, okay? A class with three variables, three instance variables. Now, uh, that means you, you define a class, and then you put an init method, you define all these things, that's just, just too much boilerplate code, okay? Whereas the name tuple, you can define everything in one line. And I can treat the name tuple as if it's an object, um, the object that I created from a class kind of thing, okay? So that's another way I look at stuff, okay? Do you know if there's any magic in list comprehensions, or do they just append as usual? Um, list comprehensions are wonderful too, and I highly recommend. In fact, I tell my students, use list comprehension, because they are faster. Um, they might look very cryptic. In fact, I, uh, if they look very cryptic, then I force my students to practice. In homework, quiz, everything, I ask them, do list comprehension, otherwise you'll lose points. Okay. Um, they're cryptic, but they are way more efficient I wouldn't say way more efficient, but they're efficient than doing a for loop, okay, for a certain type of operation. Uh, there's also another one called map, uh, which if you are from a functional programming world, you will find map more um, natural than list comprehension. But list comprehension definitely is a good. It is so list comprehension. What it does is it essentially doesn't append, okay, producing a new list. So given a list, you using list comprehension, you can produce another list. You're doing an append operation. But it does append in a little more efficient way. Okay, uh, it's kind of hard to explain right now, but there are people who have given talks on the topic where they explain why list comprehensions are faster than uh, a for loop. Okay, yeah. Uh, is there a preferred way to initialize a list of fixed length, particularly depending on like how complex the data type is going to be? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Is there a preferred way to initialize a list of a fixed length? So I know it's going to have a thousand things. Um, okay, so. Uh, with a list, all that uh, the array contains is a pointer to objects, okay? So that means, technically, that pointer can point to anything you want, okay? So you can start by creating a list of 1,000 length, all filled with zero, okay? And then you can say index zero, now point to something else. Index two, point to something else. You can keep doing that forever. Any more questions? <laughs> Actually, I had one. Yeah. Uh, so is there a reason why lists are not implemented as linked lists and implemented as arrays? Um, I am going to make an ass assumption here because I didn't create, a, I, I'm not a core developer of Python. Um, this array of pointer way of doing stuff, it's actually common across many, many languages. Mm -hmm. C Sharp does the same way. I'm going to make a guess that Java also is very similar in idea. Um, and Python does the same way. So, uh, which basically means that there is, there is an intrinsic reason why every programming language to takes this route, mm. okay? Which I'm not familiar with, but I'm going to make a guess that that's why Python also follows the same approach. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, thank uh, Dr. Ravi uh, for this excellent talk. Thank you.